Hi guys, so as I'm sure you're fully aware, I absolutely love 3D printing and, and how it's changed this hobby so much, especially for me being able to now print out, well, whatever I want and print out as much as I want. Um, and if you've seen one of my recent sort of videos, you'll have seen I can even print out mini me's, which is just nuts. Um, so obviously been able to do this by scanning uh, my head in, uh, but I'm sure most of you guys won't want to see me scan my head in. What you want to do is scan miniatures in as well. That's kind of what we're all into, miniature figures. And the ability to be able to scan your own miniature in, or any kind of miniature, and then 3D print as many as you want to make up that full army is just amazing. But one thing I will say though, most of the scanners that you may have seen me try so far, uh, whilst they work really, really well, um, they are very expensive. <sighs> but not no more. There's a 3D scanner you can get now, which, yeah, isn't going to break the bank. Uh, and it's this. The Open Scan Mini. It's kind of a, a DIY scanner, which is really cool. So you have two options when you come to buy this. You can buy it sort of fully sort of made like I've got here, or you can get it in a kit form. So you literally do build it yourself, which is just amazing. Uh, but I'm not that technically minded yet. Yeah, I've gone for the option of it already pre-assembled and it turns up like this. Um, lovely little thing, say nice and small, doesn't take up too much room on the old desk. There are links down below, we can find out more information about this awesome scanner. And I say this really is a very affordable scanner for everyone when it comes to, yeah, it's scanning in miniatures. And it's also very easy to use to scan the miniature as you don't have to hold a scanner and wave it around like a wand. This thing, yeah, you just stick your miniature on this little center thingy, pop it on, and then the scanner does all the moving for you, which obviously makes things, well, so much easier. And the setup is simple. All I need to do is plug in my Ethernet cable that's um, connected to my router, as this thing is done, obviously, wirelessly, which is awesome. And in a bit of power. So, yeah, it's simple plug in the power, turn the button on. And there's a little light on the inside just to indicate that, well, the power's working okay. And yeah, it's on, so you can see that's in there, that's great. And as my computer is so old, yeah, I had to buy a Wi Fi dongle just because, yeah, my machine is ancient. But yeah, this was a cheap little thing, and you just got to plug it in one of the USB ports. And hey, presto, Wi Fi. So, this scanner works by photogrammetry. And well, that's easier done than said. And basically, that just means that it's going to take lots of pictures from different angles, as you can see here on the screen, and then it puts them all together, which is pretty awesome. But don't worry, you, you've not got to do any of the hard work of stitching the images or doing anything like that. Once this machine takes all the images, it then uploads them, and then you get back a nice little STL. But before you can scan the image, there is a little bit of prep work you do need to do to each miniature. And you can do this by either using white scanning or chalk spray, or using an airbrush to kind of like overspray on the item, or even use talcum powder on it. But basically you just need to get it so it doesn't have any glossy areas or hard shadows. So I'm going to use the test model that actually sent with the scanner. And yeah, as you can see, yeah, it's already got loads of sort of like detail on it. And you can see all the, uh, well, all the little white dots that are going to show up really well when it comes to scanning this image in. So this is perfect to use, well, as my sort of test subject on my very first use of, well, this little mini scanner. So the software used for this scanner is free. What you've got to do is open up your web browser, type in open scan, and then this appears. And then you can click on settings and, well, as you can see, there's lots of things here to change. But if you've ever watched me do uh, any videos with 3D printing, you'll see that I typically use whatever settings are, well, standard settings. Um, yeah, I don't like to mess about with things too much, because if it works, yeah, why mess about with it? But if you want to go in this bit, you can go in here and you can fine tune this to, uh, to get things how you want them. But for me, yeah, I'm happy leaving them as they are. And this software is constantly being updated, so yeah, always check here in case, well, there's a new version out. So I do have the latest version, so yeah, I'm ready to sort of, well, start scanning. So there are a few settings that I would mess about with, and that's these ones. And this is basically where you can focus the miniature in and out. Um, obviously adjust the shutter speed, depending on how much light you've got in your area. So with this, you don't want to put sort of any extra or additional lighting on the miniature, because the scanner itself does have a little light on it, which is awesome. Um, and obviously you can arrange or change the amount of photos you take. Obviously, the more photos you take, the uh, the well, the, the better the miniature will come out. 
um, but it does obviously take longer. So it's that fine tuning of doing it so you take just enough photos without it taking, well, forever to do. So as I, I did have a little bit of a mess about with this, again with the focus as well, you want to be able to focus on the nearest part of the miniature and focus on the furthest part of the miniature. So these settings I don't mind changing because you can see exactly, well, what's happening when you do change it. So yeah, I'm about good to go, so give it a little name and then start the thing off. Unfortunately this is where my computer is pretty old. Um, it is taking the pictures and moving the thing around. Unfortunately on the screen, yeah, it's not quite showing each picture because, well, my computer can't keep up with itself. But it is taking the pictures and obviously this is how the machine looks again. This footage has been speeded up, so again, just so to show you exactly how it looks. Um, but yeah, it would go around, take a picture, then move, take a picture, then move, um, and so on. So yeah, obviously I've got it set to take 100 pictures. And this is where if you've got a model that's very intricate, then yeah, take 200 pictures. Obviously the more pictures, then definitely the more definition and the more it's going to capture of your miniature. And as you can see at the top there, it shows you how many sort of photos it's taken of how many. And obviously the amount of time left. So once it hits 100, uh, like it has now, and then yeah, that's it all complete. So it says routine done, it's ready. And then we can then get the files and send them off to be turned into an SDL. So this is where it's really good that you don't have to do any, well, any stitching or messing about or any of that kind of thing. It is just a case of clicking a couple of buttons and then clicking the upload button. And so this is where it will send, well, these 100 images Helps it tells you um, the size of the file as well, which is pretty cool. So again, this is where I have speeded up my footage, and this is purely because my computer, um, I can't even remember when I got it. It's got to be at least seven, eight years old. It takes about half an hour for it to actually boot up and start every morning. Um, so yeah, it's a bit pants. But the good thing is, say you upload the images, and then you get an email back with your STL. So depending on how well you prepped your miniature and how many images you took, you may need to do a little bit of work on it, but this is how mine came out and all I needed to do was just go into Tinkercad and remove the base, which is simple enough. And then my little test miniature, yeah, he's ready to print out. And this is how he's come out. So here's the original open scan Benchy, which obviously we started off with at the beginning. And this is the one I've just printed out. And yeah, really pleased with how this has come out. Um, yeah, definition is all there. The only thing that's obviously not come out as well as the other one, I guess, is some of the wording on the bottom, but that could well be the settings I had when I was printing them out. But um, yeah, no, other than that, <laughs> yeah, miniatures. We can scan them in now at an affordable price, which is awesome. But obviously it doesn't stop there. We can have lots of fun with these things. And well, I can't help myself. I need to stick my head on everything. So yes, this is me. This is the open scan John Benchy. And I think you'll agree, I look quite fitting there in my uh, my little armor, my little, uh, little little tummy there, which uh, kind of looks like my tummy. Um, yeah, I have eaten all the pork pies. So yeah, really pleased about this has come out. Um, just love it. So miniatures, you can scan them in at an affordable price. Awesome stuff. And there we go guys, so yeah, if you want an affordable scanner for your miniatures, yeah, definitely recommend the Open Scan Mini. Uh, obviously say the size of the miniature, it's 8 by 8 by 8 centimetres. So yeah, you can't scan your head in. <laughs> well, maybe uh, you can have a go, but I don't think it'll work. Uh, but yeah, for miniatures, it's ideal. So don't forget, links all down below to where you can get more information about this, costing, and well, if you want to order one, everything's down below. So yeah. Awesome stuff. Okay, guys, you all take care. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, leave comments, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. And uh, we'll see what we can put my head on next time. It's going to be an orc one day. Bye for now.